Okay, all right. Who we got coming up next, BB? Vinny Crooks. Bringing personal stuff to work. <laughs> <Okay>. that- <laughs> In case you don't know, that's Silly. Heather B's husband right there. Give it a hey, 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 hey. Okay. Talk to him. What's up, brother? She got Uchi. She got... <laughs> You know what? Two personal. Oh, you, you a ringer. I remember you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Say your name again. Vinny Crooks. Vinny Crooks. I know you, bro. You know me? I, said, I, know I know you, bro. You, oh, man. Give out your social, family. I know uh, you, Vinny Crooks. You can follow me on all social media platforms. V-I-N-N-Y-C-R-O-O-K-S. I'm from North Minneapolis. Yeah. We're going to see what you do to yeah. this, though. I got five on We did this on yeah. purpose, Vinny Crooks. Uh, uh. Minnesota, stand the fuck up. Hey, this is us. This yeah. ain't the movie, dog. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Stupid. Yeah. Uh. Money, power, respect, calm and collect. Gorilla from the Midwest with banana clips in my dialect. Where I'm from, if you ain't authentic, you lose respect. Before Khaled, I knew that we'd be the best. Yeah. I know pushes that deliver pounds like UPS. Crumbling OG in my backwoods to ease the stress. Y'all out here playing checkers, I compete in chess. Knocking down these pawns, now I'm saying check They hate to see me blessed Taking my road to success with no GPS I made my own lane, move out the way for you get wrecked Elevating the boss level like BMF Out here stunting like BMX Never caught slipping like DMX Hustling like today's my final breath Future brighter than a VVS If one day I might see my death Hope they make a mural of me next to Prince Riding clean, dripping like a Cuban link hey, 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 hey. We got a hyena right here? Yeah. Uh-huh. This is your thing, man. I like what I'm hearing from the Twin Cities. You did your thing, family. Look at him, man. Look at his sneaker game, too. I always look at the sneaker game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't jack him, I didn't right. bring my best, you know, representation today because it already got light, so, you know, I didn't want to steal light. You know what I mean? You know, so I... Then bring my best sneaker game, Heather. Stop my man had sway up. feeling insecure okay, about his sneaker game. I know. Yeah. Organized Grind with Oracle Uno. Yes, yes. Recorded live at Graf Fruit Studios in South Minneapolis. What's up, world? This is Oracle Uno checking in once again with yet another episode of Organized Grind, the podcast. Today, we got episode 28 with my guy, Vinny Crooks from Minneapolis. Say what's up, man. Yo, yo, peace. What up? What how's up, everything? Oracle? How's everything going today, bro? Man, I've been blessed, man. I can't complain, you know what I'm saying? Just trying to stay above it, man. You know what I'm saying? Or... Yeah, yeah. So, uh, we just got to hear uh, your uh, 2019 Sway in the Morning uh, cypher there. Hell yeah. Was that your first time on Sway? Yeah, yeah, that's correct, man. That was my first time on Sway, actually. Um, I went to go check out on uh, one of the ciphers uh, a couple years ago. Okay. And I was out, I was late for signing up, so I was just there, you know, supporting, you know, watching, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I said, man, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna rap there, <laughs> you know, next year. Next year I missed it. <laughs> Yet again, I was like, nah, the next year I'm definitely, I'm definitely freestyling for Sway. Yeah. And I made it happen this year, man. It's, it's, it's surreal, man. It's, it's a surreal feeling, man. That's dope. That's dope. So, yeah, uh, I always say to people, I mean, timing is really, it's one of the most important things in music. So maybe it was for the best that perhaps, you know, a couple years back, you didn't do it yet. You didn't sign up. Because this year, you, you fucking smashed it. Most definitely, yeah, man. Like I've been watching uh Sway interviews for years, man. Like even when I was still in school, man, I was just um, I was just tuning in to Sway and um, you know the gems he was dropping. You right. Know, I was just trying to, you know, trying to get some insight. Yeah. Um, and Sway is one of those, you know, one of those dudes that really like is he's really the dean of hip hop, bro. Yeah. You know for what I'm saying? Sure. He knows a lot of shit and. To 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 say uh, to to really impress him with with the freestyle I just did it's, it's crazy man yeah it's crazy yeah I mean if you if you look back at uh at his morning show on the radio uh, mm-hmm. uh I mean so many legendary MCs yeah have, he didn't have, have Pac he him. had Biggie he had Jay Z I mean the list goes on man he just had he's had so many legends freestyle on his show. So I was like, you can't, you can't fuck up. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. not, especially in front of Sway, you cannot fuck up in front of him. So I didn't know if I was going to freestyle or, you know, mm-hmm. do a written. 
Mm-hmm. And I was just like, man, I kind of want to spit a written dog. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you almost got to you know, at, on that yeah, format, you know? Yeah, because I, I wanted to... I wanted, to really own the moment you know yeah. what i'm saying mm-hmm. with a freestyle i mean i'm not i'm not the best at freestyling you know i need i need to you know practice warm up a, a little yeah, bit yeah. a little more you know what i'm saying but you know I, I i really wanted to you know spit a written yeah and you know that that really you know solidified everything for hell me. yeah so what was going through your mind when sway was like i've heard of you bro to be honest i was kind of <laughs> I was kind of shook for a minute when he said that. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa, you just gonna start right there?" Like, <laughs> yeah. But I like that gave me a lot of confidence, though, man. Like, you know, that made me feel comfortable on stage, man. You know, it, it felt like it was meant to be for real. Why not? You know, when he said that, I, I was like, "Yeah, I'm meant to be here, bro." Like, and for it's for a reason, bro. It's for the the beat too. I mean, he he also said, "Yo, like we saved this beat for you." You know what's funny? I knew they was gonna play that beat. Yeah. I knew because I've watched, you know, ciphers that they've done mm, mm-hmm. and, you know, like going out of state. Like, I think they did a cipher in like Miami okay. before they came to Minneapolis. Yeah. And they was playing, I mean, they was playing the same beats that they was playing at the, the Ice House. Sure. So I kind of knew what to expect, mm. what they was playing. But like the, I got five on it beat. I, I, I've rapped on that beat for years. Like I, I've. You know, I I done remixes to that, Hell so yeah. Hell yeah. I I know what it's like to hop on that beat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah, it, it it wasn't hard for me. It was it was pretty like it's pretty simple. You right. know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, I just owned it. That shit was dope. Well, uh, why don't we get into your history? Um, yeah. So we were talking a little bit off mic, but uh, why don't you let the listeners know how old are you right now? So I'm 22 years old. Okay, 22 yeah. in the game. I was and born in 97. 97, holy yeah. shit. Um, so where were you born and where did you grow up? So my parents split when I was three. Okay. I was born in South Minneapolis. Word. But when I when when they divorced, we was moving around a lot. Okay. So my dad, you know, I go to visit him on the weekends. I stay with my mom on the weekdays. You know how that is. So sure. my dad was staying in like, he was staying like over Northeast, okay. North Minneapolis. And then, you know, he'd be moving to like Burnsville mm-hmm. and like East St. Paul. My dad moved around a lot. Sure. My mom, she stayed, you know, kind of like in the burbs. You know okay. what I'm saying? So I was staying with my moms, but then I was also going to visit my dad. You know, my dad lived out in the hood, mm-hmm. so I was with him on the weekends. So I got kind of a balance of the suburbs and the hood. Sure. And I was like, so yeah, mo- most of my most of my life I spent in North Minneapolis. That's where I got serious with music. Okay. And that's what I represent. When you hear in the music, I always say North Minneapolis because, well, my dad was raised there. So my dad, you know, considers that home. Sure. And that's where we currently live in now. So, mm-hmm. yeah, North Minneapolis is where I've, where I've stayed most of my life. Man. Okay, dope. Do you remember your very first memory of hip hop? Was it music? Was yeah. it a party? Was it dancing? For sure, yeah. I was, um, so we going back to like when I was eight or nine. Um, so we're talking I, like 2004 or something like that. Yeah, okay. 2004, 2005. I was um, I was with my cousins, and they put on the movie uh, Juice. Oh. And I was too young at the time to watch that kind of movie. <laughs> sure, sure. But my cousins didn't didn't care. They they it's like man, yeah, you know what I'm saying right. it's whatever you know yeah yeah we watching it. So we um, I I, I just remember the intro playing. And hearing um, Eric B and Rakim, the No the Ledge yeah, joint, yeah, yeah. And with that play, I was just like at the edge of my seat, like, "Yo, what, what is this? Like, what, 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 what is this right here that we listening to? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's, that's Eric B and Rakim. Like, what kind of music is this? It's hip hop. And I was just like tuned in, you know, watching the movie and you know, like seeing Pac and like, just like. I, I ain't, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. When I watched the movie, bro, I, I was I was mad at Pac. Mm. I looked at him as like a villain. Hell you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like Hell he, yeah. 
man, you kill all you kill right. all the homies, bro. Like, he played that character like that? so fucking good. He, bro, he killed that, bro. Yeah, he killed that, and that's when I really got familiar with hip hop. Just watching that movie, and when they was in the um, when they was battling mm-hmm. DJing, mm-hmm. when Q was um, you know, battling uh. I forget who he's battling in that in that scene, right. but you know they was um just going crazy. Yeah, just going crazy, and that that was like another moment for me where I was just like, dude, what is this? Yeah, what is this? Right. And I was young at the time. You gotta think. I was like, yo, I've never seen something like this before. Like th- I, 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 and that whole time I was just thinking like, I, I want to find out what this is. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is, but I'm fucking with it, and I want to I want to be a part of it. Hell yeah. And. Yeah, man. Damn. So, so then, um, from then on, uh, what was the first? And I'm not even sure because by the time you were able to purchase and have your own money, we were probably <laughs> in like the MP3 era, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so, like the iPod era. Man. Yeah. All right. So, what was your first? I was gonna say purchase, but what was yeah. the first hip hop album or project that you went out and found on your own because you had to have it? Did you buy so, it or did you download it? The, the first album I purchased or the first album I listened to just by like iPod or MP3? First one that that you were like, I have to have this. I'm, I'm going to say the first CD I purchased. Okay. Um, I was in Memphis at the time visiting okay. my uncle. And um, at the time, man, I was really into like the South. Okay. Um, Three Six Mafia. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, uh, Yo Gotti, Eight Ball, and MJG. You know, yeah. going to Memphis. You know, um, it really opened my opened my eyes to what the scene was out there. I was really like doing my homework, like because I wanted to know like what was what was popping mm-hmm. in and like what in in Memphis. So I I was I was going out there, and my uncle took me. He he knew I really like like hip hop, mm-hmm. so he took me out to the store. Um, I forget what the store was called, some CD store in South Memphis, but uh, he took me and um, he was like, yeah, look around, see what you find, you know, if you like it, you know, just, mm-hmm. you know, bring it to me, I'll buy it for you. I was like, oh, word. Yeah. Um, and I was looking and um, I was looking in the rap section, mm-hmm. obviously, found um, an 8-Ball and MJG CD mm-hmm. on the outside looking in. Okay. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that album, but it's like, a, oh, it's this came out in like the early 90s I think I don't know mid 90s but it was a uh, album that I picked and I was I was fucking with that Hell right yeah. like I was a huge A Ball and MJG fan back in the day so yeah that was really that was my first CD I ever okay. like got you know what I'm saying sure yeah so it seems like a lot of your like earlier hip hop intake mm-hmm. was like some good shit like A Ball yeah. MJG Rock Him and Eric B yeah. I mean, for someone of your age in the early 2000s, I mean, we'd probably be thinking like... like People thought I was like raised on like Bow Wow, Chief G-Unit Keith, and- G-Unit and all that. Which, I, look, I was I was a fan of G-Unit. I was listening to G-Unit. Oh, Don't get sure. me wrong. G-Unit they had their was my shit. They had their way. Yeah. G-Unit definitely had their way. I was listening to G-Unit heavy. But um, for me personally, bro, like um, going to school... Yeah. Um, I was um, I was listening to a lot of different. I, I wasn't really like I I never really knew enough hip hop yet. Sure, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I was still you know, I I didn't know a lot at the time. Sure, but then sure. as soon as I got into school or uh, this school called uh, Fair School Downtown. Okay, I enrolled there in the eighth grade. Okay, and um, that's where I learned a lot of new hip hop. Okay, what was school like for you? School was um school was it it was definitely a balance um cuz I I didn't really I didn't really have a lot of friends at the time mm-hmm. so I didn't really know who I could you know like connect with sure you know um but I I met I met a homie of mine who was um who was listening to a lot of different shit like people most people were listening to you know what was current at the time and sure. what was booming mm-hmm. but he was listening to like strictly 90s okay like 90s music and he was like mm-hmm. your age yeah okay cool yeah like gangster rap all that yeah and you know 
we was in the same homeroom. Okay. So, you know, I, I'd be like seeing what he's listening to. And I was like, oh, you fucking with that? Yeah, what you listening to? Oh, I'm listening to this and that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, check this out. And he was just putting me on the new new, new shit, but it was 90s, so I didn't yeah. really know. Like, oh, this old. Like, <laughs> you ain't listening to what's, you know, current right now? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we talking, this is like 2000 and f- 2004. Two- okay. So like- oh, no, wait. No, no, no. My bad. No, this is like 2010. Oh, wow. Okay. 2010 when I was in a... Like eighth grade, ninth grade. Sure. And we was um he was showing me just all this like boom bap, this yeah. gangster rap, West Coast, East Coast, South, Damn. all this. So he was like putting me on the shit like, you know, E forty. Okay. And, you know, I remember uh the 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 first uh album he put me on to by E forty was in a major way. Mm. And um then it was Spice One. Word. You know, one eighty seven he wrote. Yeah. Then it was too short. Okay. Life is too short. Um, then it was like, who else? You know, Three Six Mafia. He was listening to that um, Mystic Styles album. Yeah. And you know, it just went on, bro. Like you know, he even even like Snoop, Dre, The Chronic, Doggy Style, like all those classics. Like yeah, you know, Outkast, Quimini, Oh yeah, AT Alien, Southern Playlist, Cadillac Music. I can go on and on, man. Hell he was, yeah. He knew a whole lot more than I ever did, and. Like he he was putting me on to everything, bro, and I was just like, whoa! Like I never knew about all this hip hop, bro. Mm. But like now, like it's embedded in me. Now I'm curious to know what's like, what else is there? Right? Is there more? Like I need to I need to find out. So I was just I was just disco- I was just doing my discovering, bro. Yeah. And I just did my research, and now I'm just like I'm this huge '90s head, like sure. this hip hop head. Word up, and. Yo, thanks to my man's bro, he put me onto a lot of, a lot of shit, bro. So, so yeah. was he just was he just naturally interested in just discovering music, or did he have like family and so, friends influencing yeah. him? So, eventually he 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 was like, "Yo, you want to come over to my crib? I got some equipment. We can try to fuck around." I was okay. like, "All right, bet." And he had gear. So yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> we was um, we went to his crib. And um, his stepdad, he had like stacks of like CDs, mm. vinyls, and if you look through the collection, bro, it was just '90s, '80s, all that. Sure. So then that's how I started to realize, like, oh, that's where you're getting all this, mm-hmm. all these gems from. Yeah. Is your stepdad? You know what I'm saying? They was like that whole household was just full of just music cultures and mu- different cultures of sure, music, bro. Sure. And that's that's when I was really soaking in everything. Like I was just a sponge soaking everything that I was hearing. Mm. And you know, he, you know that's when I started listening to Pac, All Eyes on Me, and put me onto like early Ice Cube, sure, you know, Easy E, N W A, all yeah. that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, Wu Tang, Mob Deep. You know, um, who else? Uh, um, ludicrous. Sure. You know, all that, all that. Um, yeah, man. I, I really like. I, I really gained a lot of, you know, a lot of like knowledge from just listening and just tuning in to, you know, what like what was really impactful at the time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And years later, it's still relevant. Oh yeah. And you know. I can hear it in your flow too. Like that was that was one of the things when I first heard you rap because we had first met at the Cipher for Yo MNTV Raps. Yeah, yeah. It was it was you, Elab, and myself yeah. Yeah. on a Cipher. I remember that. And uh, I remember hearing you rap, and I was like, I was trying to do the math in my head because I was like, this dude's style doesn't equate to his age. Like he's spitting <laughs> some golden age style right now. Um, yeah. So. In your flow, like, in, I'm pretty sure that's why a lot of people fuck with you heavy, is that even though you're young, like, you have that 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 polished flow of, yeah. of you're actually saying some shit with some style, with some actual, like, math within your rhymes, like, you're Most doing definitely. five count rhymes and shit like that. Most definitely. Um, so, when did you start to actually rap? Like, like what made you say, yo, like, I'm, I'm gonna sit down and try to write something? So, um... 
13 is when I was actually writing my first rhyme on a notebook. Okay. Composition notebook. Did you have a, a beat or was it just writing? It was just like, well, when I when I was going to going to school, we had laptops. Word. We could keep our own laptops. So like I was just playing beats on YouTube, just mm. finding instrumentals and just rapping on, you know, just random instrumentals, you know, boom bap stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And um, well, I I used the composition notebook that I had, you know, with all my school supplies. So I was just using that to just you know write freely and you know write whatever's on my mind. Mm-hmm. And then um, you know later on, you know. It just, I, I just kept, you know, I just kept writing, you know, and when I got into, when I got into the eighth grade, ninth grade, um, I had found out about this after school program called mm-hmm. music production. Okay. And, um, shout out Andrea Woods. Um, he was the one that, um, like taught me how to, you know, structure, okay. um, you know, like bars yeah. and, you know, what a 16 is. Sure. So... He was he was a producer. Mm-hmm. He didn't really rap, but he was like, he was he was on like FO Studio, and then he would be, he would be like, all right. So you gonna write to this? And I was like, I, I I just signed up for the class. I was like, I was in there as just like a, I was just watching mm-hmm. one day, and then I I signed up the next day, and I came in. And it was the first time I ever seen FL Studio. It was the first time I ever seen a beat made in okay. front of my eyes. Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, damn, like, <laughs> I want to learn how to make one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he was like, sit down, I'll show you. And, you know, that's when he was just going through, just breaking it down on FL Studio. You know, that's how you add the claps, the drums, sure. the kicks, and all that. Snares and all. So I was just having fun with it, you know. And then I started to write a verse. And now that I think about it, it was trash at the time. It was like my first verse. I didn't know what else. I, I probably, none of that shit was believable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, it was like, look, man, you know, come back. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep, we we, we going to work on it a little. We're going to work on it. Come back. We're going to work on that. Sure. So, <laughs> yeah. And as time went on, bro, I just, I just stayed consistent. I just kept coming back. You know, hip hop was just something that I just followed, bro. Mm-hmm. It was just like this one, oh. Uh, like, I'll go for one day and uh, I'll probably just do something else. You know, it was like something that I I wanted to be a part of. Sure. Like, bad. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I didn't know what else to do. So, I just kept going. And as time went on, bro, I just, I just got better at it. Mm-hmm. And I started to tweak some stuff here and there. And, you know, just, just you know, sharpening my sword, bro. And working on my craft, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. That was like the first time I really um was was really le- like learning the basics of how to really make a, a song. Sure. Like and cu- fast forward in a couple years later. Yeah, man. Um there's this class that was just um added called spoken word. Oh. Spoken word was an outlet for you, well, for kids to like write poems, mm-hmm. write poetry. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna sign up, bro. This this could be, you know, an opportunity for me to, you know, learn, you know, learn yeah. new shit about, you know, writing." Right, right. And um, my teacher at the time, which I don't know if people are familiar, but uh, Crescent Moon. Oh, word up! Yeah, from uh. Kill the Vultures. Odd jobs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was hype man for Slug back mm-hmm. in the early 2000s. That's right. He was actually the teacher. Oh, dope, man. Yeah. The so good dude right there. Yeah, yeah, man. It's real solid. Um, yeah, he was um, he was a te- he was teaching for about a few years. I think maybe longer than that. But um, that um, the 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 first year I went um, I took the class. You know, he was just. I was learning a lot more about, you know, poetry and actually, you know, trying to let out your emotions through your music. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's when I started to get really serious with what I was saying in my music Mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to, you know, address, you know, things in my life that people can relate to. And, you know, um, that class really helped me, you know, really find my sound and find my style. Nice. And I, I got to give uh, 
props to Crescent Moon yeah. on that because he Moon, he man. really helped me kind of find my style in a way. You know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, man, he brought a lot of guests in there like Carnage. Mm -hmm. Slug. Mm -hmm. I think he brought Brother Ali in there too, mm. just as guest speakers, as motivational speakers. Yeah, yeah. Just to kind of talk to the kids and, you know, give them advice on, you know, if they want to, you know, take it serious, yeah. you know. Um, I think I asked Slug a question, but I forget. Oh, no, actually, I do remember. Um, I asked him, you know, uh, I was having, I was having trouble, you know, with my, with my verses. Mm -hmm. I always throw them away, mm -hmm. but I didn't know if I should keep them or not. And I asked him, yo, should I like, sh I, I always had this habit of throwing verses, like throwing my verses away. Should I keep them or should I just like, you know what I'm saying? What do you think, bro? Like, should I just refresh or mm -hmm. should I keep what, you know, mm -hmm. what could be like history? Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. right. And he, and I, I forget what he said, but you know, he was just like, no, like, you know, just I, nah, damn, I forget what he said, bro. But <laughs> it was like some... You you should just you should just follow what your what your heart and follow your gut. Sure. If if you feel like they should be thrown away, if they're not if they're not worth anything to you, then that's just what it should be. Mm -hmm. And you know I took that and you know I, I just I just applied it to my you know just just um how I make music. Sure. And just yeah. Okay. So uh, we're gonna get into the first commercial break here. But uh, when did you graduate high school? Graduated 2015. 2015? Yeah, yeah. Did you, and when's the first time that you actually went and like recorded some raps? I recorded some raps in the, in the ninth, ninth grade. One, uh, like I said, the after school program sure, that we, yeah. uh, that we were in, we, uh, he had, uh, equipment, he had a microphone for us mm, to rap on, you know, nice. record our stuff. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that was actually my first time actually recording. And then the library also downtown. Okay. Downtown Minneapolis is where we would go to. And you can, you know, record in there for like a couple hours. You have to sign up for it. Sure. And, you know, we was just using any studio that we could at the time to, mm. you know, just, you know, try to stay productive. And, yeah, yeah. You know, make quality music. Yeah. And, yeah, man. Do you uh, still have a, a copy of that first track you did? <sighs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, all my all my stuff is probably is gone with the wind, bro. Word Everything up. from the when I started. Yeah. Okay. Well, shit. Uh, we're kicking it with Vinny Crooks. This is episode twenty eight of Organized Grind, the podcast with Oracle Uno. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get into this first commercial break. So we'll be right back. Yo. Yo. Represent in the Midwest. This is Truth Maze. Hey. Yes, y'all. Check out the new EP. It's entitled The Holy Bible. You can find it on Spotify and Apple Music and elsewhere. Red Pill Music, baby. Uh -huh. You see, with my words, I can heal or kill. Talk, fuck, shit, or truly keep it real. I can grab up a burner and flame my brother. Or he and I can train so we elevate each other. I can talk about pussy all day and all night and not admit. I'm toxic and don't treat women right I can tell everybody how to pop a new pill Or tell the next generation the matrix is real Cause what I know is I hold the power at will Still sharp and still goddammit it's ill For mentally the blade I hold it takes skill Specially designed so I can kill Bill When the fake shit in me I need to reveal That's what a god does with the ability to build My soul is my rock my spirit's my shield My soul is my rock My spirit's my shield Yes, yes, y'all. Organized Grind, the podcast in full effect with Oracle Uno. This is episode 28. We're kicking it with Vinny Crooks out of Minneapolis. Sir. So uh, we just got into your history a little bit. Um, we got to the point where... You're basically graduated high school. You've recorded your first song. What was your exposure to local hip hop? My exposure to local hip hop. Well, I had another um, homie uh, of mine. Um, we had a uh, algebra class together. Okay. Yeah, I think it was algebra or geometry, one of them shits. But we had um, 
we weren't really we weren't really paying attention in class, bro. We was talking about music like every day, bro. Right, right. Like, and he was actually, you know, making a wave, you know, doing shows. He was, um, I think he was, um, doing. He was he was moving with uh, Alan Kingdom at the time, oh, okay, yeah. a little bit, and then, you know, they started to you know do their own things and shit. Yeah. So um, so yeah um. Radio Ali, my man. He uh, we uh, we started doing open mics okay. and uh, shows. We had uh, went to this uh, one open mic called the Blue Now. Yeah, shout out Blue um, Now. Rest yeah, in peace. and that was my first um, open mic experience. Okay. Um, with Now's, um, you know that's my dude still to this day, man. You know my big bro. Um, that's one. That, that was the first time I actually met him. Okay. Was that your first time on stage with a microphone and shit too? Yep. Wow. Yeah. The yeah. Blue Nile, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, place man. is historical. Yeah. So that was um, so that was uh, back in like two two thousand and two thousand fifteen. Okay. I think between two thousand fourteen two thousand fifteen. Yeah. And um, I just kept uh. I kept going to like open mics outside of the Blue Now because it was it was starting to go out of business, mm -hmm. and I heard about it shutting down, and I was kind of devastated because that was actually an outlet for me mm. f to you know show my skills, yeah, yeah, and perform more. So I was kind of like, damn. All right, man, where else could I go? You know, and then that's when I found out about Fifth Element. Okay, and. Uh, I, I was, you know, rocking there, you know, here and there, you know, and um, yeah, man, I, I just, I just, whatever, whatever show we could get our hands on, you know, I, I, I did a sh my first show at the Gamut Gallery. Okay. And that was 2016. Gamut Gallery? The Gamut Gallery, yeah, yeah. Where's that at? That's on like downtown. Okay. Downtown, like on Marquette. Oh sure. Yeah. Okay. And um that was um Yeah, I'm not going to lie, man. That was <laughs> that was that was a whack performance. Talk about it. I was just my first show, you know, of course your first show is not going to be I mean the greatest. Sure. Cuz I mean you get a little stage fright, but you know, the more you continue to do shows and you start to get comfortable at some point. Right. You know. But my first show I I sucked. I, I was just like, <laughs> man, I didn't know. I don't know where I'm going to go with this, man. But, you know, people were just telling me, bro, you did your thing, man. Just keep going, bro. It, it just takes time. It takes practice. So I was like, all right, man, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to practice, you know, on my, on, my, on my stage presence, you know, just react and interacting with the crowd, man. Because yeah. that, that could really make a, a huge impact just by, you know, Getting the crowd involved, you know. Yeah. I didn't really know how to make eye contact with the crowd because you know when you're nervous, you don't really you don't really face the crowd. You're just kind of like, oh, just yeah, like, yeah, like, you know. But you know, at some point you start to realize, hey man, you know these are these are people trying to listen to good music and trying to take something away from it. Yeah. And I was just um, I really wanted to make something that people could relate to and you know people can you know actually take as you know. A, some kind of theme to their life, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, I just stayed consistent, man, you know? Um, shows started to get, I started getting more shows, mm -hmm. you know, as years went on. And now I'm at a, I'm at a place now where it's just like, I'm getting shows every month. Yeah, man. And back then, you know, it was, it was like I had a show every, every other three months, every five months. Sure. But now to see it progress and to see it boom, mm -hmm. it's just like, you know, hard work does pay off. Hell yeah, man. And if you just put the time in, put the effort in, you know, you could go really far. Yeah. And not only that, but, you know, just having a good character, mm -hmm. you know, because if you come in this industry and in, in the scene, people not fucking with you, it's probably for a reason. Right. It's probably because you're not, you're, you're not as supportive or you're not as you know you know because i I'm, I'm not i'm not gonna lie i i've i've dealt with social anxiety you know i felt like you know people couldn't tell me shit 
Mm-hmm. But it's just like, we're all in the same boat, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? This crab in a bucket mentality has got to stop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, people are still on that. But I I wanted to make a a, a vouch for myself that we 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 can all we can all get out of we can we can all make it at some point if we all just work together, man. Right. And, you know, I wanted to really like I really wanted people to really follow like what I was what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, the what I say in my music is really like is is it's motivating, mm-hmm. you know, and I see a lot of people in the scene, you know, doing the same doing the same things and people that I, you know, came up in the scene with, you know, mm-hmm. doing ciphers with. Like, you know, people like, you know, Dem Atlas, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, to see him, you know, just do his thing and, you know, sign the rhyme series, mm-hmm. you know, and back at Fifth Element when, you know, I was just we was just doing ciphers and freestyling, you know. Right. It's just like, man, you know, anything's possible, man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. To uh, touch on what you were talking about, just as far as us like coming together and stuff like that, and uh, like Dem Atlas is a great example. I always kind of point at Dem Atlas as far as the example artist of someone who didn't spend too much time in the scene here. Yeah. In yeah. order to get sucked into all the different pitfalls and different yeah. kind of traps, and then now you're feeling away. Right. Um, I feel like Rhyme Sayers kind of came in at like the perfect time at his career to where he was still pretty much new, and that gave them the chance to develop him properly yeah. and yeah. kind of guide him through. And I, I feel like you're at that level too, to where you haven't been. Um, not necessarily tainted yet, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you're still pretty fresh. And yeah. so you haven't um, fallen victim to any of these, like, uh, pitfalls or traps yet, um, yeah. which puts you in a very good place because, once again, that makes you that much more able to develop without having all of these weird political things going on and all that. But... um as far as the Minneapolis hip hop scene, you know, I've I've been in it uh, almost sixteen years now. Right. Um, I've seen I've seen a lot of people go from small act to to big time. Um, yeah. And the the most important thing that I've seen is the artists that truly make it and are quote unquote successful whatever that is because that changes year by year too whatever your definition of success is Mm. right but the people who i'm just going to put it this way seem to be the happiest with their hip-hop career are the ones that grew out of even worrying about what's going on in the twin cities like they're so like i'm just trying to sell out atlanta or Mm. i'm you know like they Mm. And and so whenever anyone talks about, well, what about First Ave? Like, they're like, well, that's cool, but, like, it's not my main thing. Like, I'm trying to get fans in Chicago. I'm trying to get fans in California. I'm, yeah. I, I'm not even worried about here. So y'all can go ahead and kill it here. Yeah. You know, have it. Have fun. But I'm focused on my career here, and I'm fine with that. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, man. But at the end of the day, bro, you can't expect for – the people back in your hometown to give you praise right at the end of the day because yeah. if you decide hey man nobody's gonna tell you what to do mm-hmm. if you want to move out of state and make a career in chicago la mm-hmm. texas right you know more power to you man yeah but don't be like i'm the best rapper in minnesota right which you decided hey minnesota's not really <laughs> booming so fuck this i'm going to la to yeah know, and, and you know and exposure. it's it's not about saying like fuck it here but it's it's not about worrying so much about kinging the twin cities yeah to whereas the people who i see who are bitter who are in bad moods who kind of move in a way of like no one is supporting you because don't they don't really feel validated no nah, mm. man right right and and no one wants to back a loser And I don't mean to say that in, like, a whack way, but, like, when you're constantly putting out the energy of, like, 
nobody's fucking with me. Like, why can't I get shows? Yeah. I can't get put on. Why am I not playing sound set? You got, you got to earn it, man. You got to earn that shit. You got to put the work in and earn it. Work. That's as simple as that, man. Work and, uh, you know, and, and just learn what's actually valuable, you know? Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so that's just something that, that, that I've seen throughout these years is the people who are the most happy with their musical careers are the ones that, kind of separate themselves from the game of Twin Cities hip hop, whatever that means. And that's not saying participating or moving out completely, but just people who are a little more worried about other things versus just like, yo, my the dopest MC in St. Paul. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, that's just something that I like to talk about just because uh, you know, I've 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 seen I've seen a lot of people just become truly happy with what they do, and they may not be the most popping, but yeah. they have a career enough to where they can go on the road and come back and pay for their bills, you know, yeah. just off a of rap. And they're happy with that. They might not be rich, but they're yeah. still doing it. And, a, and a, another thing, too, like I was saying, um, it, it's, it, and again, it's, it's about your character, too, mm-hmm. and how you, you know, network, you know, when when I was networking, man, I still to this day, like the people that I met in the scene are like my best friends now. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I can really say that they're like they're my big homie, you know what I'm saying? For my sure, big for brother. Sure. So like, you know, e- even even female rappers too, man. I'm, I've I've definitely, you know, even singers too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I just built relationships with a lot of people in the scene and it's a good feeling, bro, when people, you know, show show that kind of love now granted we don't know each other too well yeah yeah but we see each other and what we're doing oh yeah and we see the hard work in each other and you know we tip we tip our hat to each other for sure just as a a you know like keep doing what you're doing yeah and i i, I just love the scene out here man i love what people are doing mm-hmm. and i really feel like minnesota is going to be the next thing that people are going to be like yo what is this shit? Right. I want to come to Minnesota and see, like, I want to experience it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I had I had heard someone uh, made a uh, comment, and they said that, pe- that people come up here just to be local MCs here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. they come up here to be local. Yeah. You know? Which is fucking wild to me. Um, the other good thing, too, is that I have so much more hope for this generation of our hip hop scene versus yeah. the one that I came up in. Cause uh, you know, growing up, I was watching the Rhyme Sayers and the Interlock crew and kind of basically what's been really cool about this podcast is I've been able to have people come in and kind of explain the gaps before I got into the hip hop scene. Right. And it, it, it seems like at, at one point we were truly a unified unit Mm-hmm. But then once once Rhyme Sayers started to do their thing and Interlock and Headshots and uh, uh, the Abstract Pack, mm-hmm. that's where things kind of started to splinter because mm-hmm. now people are trying to to that was like the foundation go for the spot yeah. of we we are top hip hop no yeah. we are top hip hop yeah. and once that happened, all of the unification was pretty much gone because now. Mm-hmm. It's just crews trying to be the top crew, trying to be the next rhyme sayers. Yeah. Um, but crab, crab in a bucket mentality. Like you were saying though, this 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 generation, I I think because they're pretty much removed from those kind of wars and you know just the different shit in the politics. All right, when you got into the game, you already had the established uh, top dog, right? So. Mm-hmm. You're not really worried about making that spot for you. Same with the rest of the crop of your MCs and and singers and and producers. Like, all right, we already have this top dog shit here, Mm. so we're not even sweating it. Like, y'all can have that lane. Mm. We're going to go ahead and create this lane here. And I feel like you're going to be a a very big part of, like, the next step of our scene, I feel like, you know? Yeah. It's It's really cool. Yeah, man, it's... It's still it's still a, a trip to me, man. You know, I didn't know how I was gonna make a lane for myself in the scene. Yeah. But I know um, the the work proves proves itself, man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I just stay consistent, and 
like I said, to build relationships with a lot of a lot of people that have been successful in the scene, you know. Yeah. And you know, making it making a stamp. Sure. It's uh it's crazy, man, and it and, and it's only it's only exciting to see what it see what it can be in in five years from now. Hell yeah. You know? Hell yeah. So uh we're gonna go into the second commercial break here soon, but I uh, just wanna kinda get us from it was like twenty fifteen to nowish. Did you how many projects have you dropped so far in your career? So I have dropped one. Okay. Um, then this one dropped um late March, um highs and lows. Of this year? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. That Congratulations, was, um, man. Thanks, bro. Yeah. yeah. And I had a release show at Seventh Street Entry. Shit was uh, shit was crazy. Yeah. Okay. I had a lot of fun. But um yeah, highs and lows was a project that um it really um takes you to where, you know, I started in North Minneapolis where I started my career as a rap as an MC. Okay. And um Highs and lows is pretty much uh, a representative of people that go through highs and lows, and you know, in the scene, bro, it, it was it was a lot of highs. Yeah, it was a lot of lows. You know, in the game, it can be lonely. You know what I'm saying? But you know, at the end of the day, persevere through it all. Persevere through all the bullshit, and you know, just. Just keep moving, man. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Is uh is that the project with this uh Who Wants Smoke track that you sent? So that's actually an exclusive oh, shit. for uh an- another project I'm working on. Okay. But um uh, not gonna speak too much on that right now. That's cool. But can I still play the track? It, you can still play the okay, track, okay. but it's gonna it's 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 an exclusive and it's gonna be a single off the pro uh the first single off the project. Dope. And um uh, the, the title for the project and the release date will be announced soon, but okay. you know, for right now, this is what, um, this is like the first, first, um, Dope. little single. Nice, nice. So now that you've officially released a project, you've done shows, it's almost like you're a full fledged MC now. What are your feelings as far as the process of releasing the project? Are you happy with how it turned out? Is there something you wish you could have done? in yeah. another way yeah um it's baby steps sure you know what i'm saying yeah. i think it could be better um you know and promotion is another thing man that i need to work on um i don't have a team i don't have a promotion team i don't right. have a manager mm-hmm. i don't have you know anybody to really you know help promote so i'm i'm the only one running this circus wow so really just man trying to try to multitask and yeah, man. Okay. Working on visuals for the project. Yeah. And I'm going to drop those pretty soon. Um, Dope. You know, just, you know, trying to set the blueprint for it and all that. Yeah. And, you know, then that's what I'm going to announce the next project. And, you know, just trying to keep shit running, man. You yeah, know what man. I'm saying? So, yeah. Dope. Most definitely. Well, we're going to get into this second commercial break, and then we'll come back. We'll play a game of uh, the Lightning Gauntlet here where I'm going to ask Vinny Crooks uh, three random questions, and then uh, he can let us know what he's up to currently, and sure. uh, we'll call it a wrap. So we'll be right back. This is Organized Grind, the podcast with Oracle Luno, episode 28, Vinny Crooks. Hey, what's up, world? This is Oracle Luno checking in to let you know that I just released a brand new EP entitled Speech Therapy. It's entirely self-produced, and you can now get it at oracleuno.com. That's O-R-I-K-A-L-U-N-O dot com. Thank you for listening. It's all unraveling, I feel it in my abdomen About to take a swim in a bottle from the cabinet Full throttle, hollow in the content of the glass I sip too much pain, yeah the shit ain't even masking it Okay, got a few loose things I need to tighten up Do it in the dark before the sky tries to brighten up Maneuver in the shadows, that's all I'm really used to Most people always try to find a way to use it Feeling for a drive, I'm in need to feel alive 95 miles per hour on a 94 ride Pissing off pacifiers that are forced to come inside with me Middle and go up to the punk on the side of me Rough around the edges, disrespecting the guest list Use all my drink tickets and forget the set list I've seen it all before, and you ain't impressing I ain't shit either, yeah, I've learned that lesson Have it over the wind Got my windows open, I ain't holding it in I try to take it slow, but the motion's intense It happened too fast, can't get over the bends Let it go, let it go, let it go in the wind Got my windows open, I ain't holding it in Fast, can't get over the bends, let it go, let it go. My vision hazy, yeah, I know I'm living 
crazy though drowning in the creek. yes yes y'all organized grind the podcast with oracle uno i was trying to do some slick shit and uh didn't have enough time but that's all good we are kicking it with vinnie crooks episode 28 um thanks for coming on the show bro it's been Man, fun thanks for having me bro um so let's go ahead we'll get into this lightning gauntlet here uh it's a little game that we like to play at organized grind the podcast it's three random questions if you would like to submit your own questions for me to ask artists and special guests that stop by the podcast please send as many as you would like to be considered to organized grind podcast at gmail.com and uh I'll definitely make sure that your questions get in uh, the mix here. So here we go. Question number one for Vinnie Crooks. Under the category of it seemed like a good idea at the time, what has been your worst idea? My worst idea. That you thought was a great idea at first. So um, at the time, I had a little project that I was going to drop. Okay. Um, called Diary of the Poe. <laughs> okay. And um, the project wasn't fully complete yet. Wasn't fully complete. Sure. I had got the um, the the cover for it, and the cover was just crazy, like the best shit I ever seen. Like it was like the best Christmas gift. Okay. You know the cover was just like phenomenal. I dropped it without any release date or anything sure and at the time i thought it was a good idea to drop it you know to get people like to see it Mm -hmm. and but it just wasn't ready Mm. and it became a long process working on the album okay to where it wasn't dropping (laughs) and i i made a mistake by dropping the cover oh (laughs) shit and yeah the shit never even came out. And that was like one of the one of the fuck ups that I made in okay. my career as an artist. Like that why did you do that? Sure. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you learn from it, you move on. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a good jewel, man. I mean, um, I always say, you know, uh don't don't promote it until it's, it's fully finished, complete. You know? Yeah. Um but that's what's up though man you live you learn especially when you're doing it all on your fucking own exactly you know exactly, i mean it's man. it's tough out here but uh all right question number two what is one attraction or place that you visited that in your opinion didn't come close to living up to the hype hmm. it could even be like a show or a rapper you've seen or something too what's something that you've experienced that didn't live up to the hype I would have to say, um, uh, well, I kind of feel fucked up for saying this, but, um, the blue now okay. was just, um, a thing for me that just kind of went away mm. and I wanted, I wanted to see more of it. Okay. And it just never lived up to, you know, being forever, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And it was just unfortunate, bro. I wish it could stay longer. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. Question number three. Um, in hindsight, what particular class in school above all others do you wish you had paid more attention to or taken more seriously? I would have to say drawing. Okay. Drawing class was um a cla- I was never really good at drawing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like I would like try to paint. Mm-hmm. And like try to draw like you know portraits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I just wasn't really that. <laughs> I I I suck at drawing, bro. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying. So I I thought like I wanted to do graffiti and all that, mm-hmm. and you know try to learn how to you know really make portraits. And I wanted to you know hang up my own paintings and pictures and stuff like that. But yeah, it just never. <laughs> It just never became a, a forte. Of Word. Well, man, if you ever get some free time and you're trying to kick it, I'm more than happy to. I see you got to, some. To show you a couple things yeah. here and there. No, I'm, I'm going to definitely come back. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I got into hip hop through uh, graffiti. So Hell that's yeah. how I started to rap. I, I, I was painting trains and shit first. So, Word. Yeah, man. That's, that's dope. That's, that's hip hop. 
But shit. Uh, shit, man, that's the lightning gauntlet. Thank you for participating. Uh, we're we're in the final stretch now of uh, the podcast. Uh, do you have any sort of last words, things you want to say? What are you working on right now? What can people expect from Vinny Crooks in the future? Man, just good music. Um, I'm uh, got some shows coming up tomorrow actually. Okay, plug them. Um, I got a show with um acronym. He's doing the summer school to uh, thing. Hell yeah, that's yeah. Right. He got the flyer ready. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's kicking off tomorrow at Honey. Um, be there. I think it's uh, what time? What time does it start again? Let me see. Since you got the flyer, I need to. Yeah, it starts at 9:30 p.m. 9:30. Seven dollars yep. covered. 21 plus. Yes, sir. So make sure you pop out to that. And um, the next day I'm gonna be uh. At the Ice House, mm. doing the show, um, Ashley um, from uh, from Chill Vibes. Okay, she's uh, throwing an uh, event called Drip. Oh, dope! And uh, yeah, it's a lot of it's a lot of dope cats on that lineup, bro. So you should come check it out. Okay. Um, yeah. Other than that, man, you know, just um, visuals. Um, planning to drop those soon. Um, yeah, man, you're gonna continue to hear more from me, man. You know, just dropping more work staying consistent yeah and um yeah man that's what's up uh collaborations where, all that where can people find you y'all can find me on all social media platforms like twitter facebook um instagram you know the whole nine you can um also download my project highs and lows on a uh, social media uh i mean uh apple music mm. Spotify, uh, Tidal, Google Play, and yeah, I'm not, okay. I hope I'm not forgetting anything else. But yeah, all, man, all those joints. Um, all that is uh, yeah. is Crook spelled with a normal S or with the dollar sign? So it's kind of a thing. You can use the S or you can use the dollar sign. Okay, it's kind of it switches every now and then. It's like sometimes if I can't use the dollar sign, I'll just use the S. Uh, uh, on Spotify though, if if uh, on they Spotify, were to search, it, it should be on. It, yeah, it should be with the dollar sign. Be with the so, dollar sign. Yeah, so yeah. Vinny V I N N Y Crooks C R O O K dollar sign for the S. Yep. Word up. Yes, sir. Well, shit, man. We're gonna get into this record. Uh, this is Vinny Crooks, who wants smoke. Uh, produced by Infinity Suite. Yes, sir. Um, you want to talk a little bit about it? Yeah, so this is a project uh, project we've been working on for about a few weeks now. Okay. Uh, we just started a few weeks ago. Um, and this is the first joint we came up with. Um, I'm really happy about it. Um, you know what I'm saying? We're just going to keep it pushing. You know, keep making, you know, quality music, man. You know, this is something that... Um, this is something off the the this the really the first single so yeah okay. you know tune in man I hope y'all fucking with it man dope well thank you for sh letting me share the track I appreciate it thank Hell you yeah, for man. spending your time here hey it's a pleasure thanks for having me bro Vinny Crooks man uh, be on the lookout for this dude he's definitely gonna be making some noise um, but yeah until next time ladies and gentlemen um, this has been Organized Grind the podcast with Oracle Uno chilling with Vinny Crooks episode twenty eight. Uh, this is Vinnie Crooks, Who Wants Smoke, produced by Infinity Suite. As always, peace and love. Organized Grind with Oracle Luna. Uh. Recorded live at Graph Food Studios in South Minneapolis. I think I see the police behind me. Raised in the jacks, I never folded under stress I'm blessed, don't be a pawn in this game of chess Living with no regrets, I never banged a set But dead homies' names get engraved in flesh A lot of whack-ass rappers, they came and went Taking breaks or recess, can't pay their rent This shit ain't overnight success, this takes hard work 30,000 hours worth of bodies of work, that's how I work Probably in your turf, cracking dutches, rolling loud perk Meet my plug in the outskirts and I'm back to the oven Northside ain't nothing to fuck with Drive eyes in public, better duck Quick, they catch you with your baby mama Put two in your muffin The block of cops flooded Used to ride with a half sip on them five buses Living legend, they won't respect it I see the fear in their eyes when I'm in their presence This shit is effortless Got a squad full of spinners 
Back in the hood, got a squad full of hitters We was young and reckless, hopping over fences Dodging the popo, we still in the kitchen Relentless, trying to strategize my ways of getting richer Sent the handy, now I'm replenished, my crown glisten Been through too many obstacles, God is my witness Dripping with my wrist flicker Living fast like triple digits Levitate to triple digits, straight flexing I was in the basement like Big Tigger Real pimpish, bear witness, a rare breed It's hard to compare me when I'm in a rare league When I speak for the G's, I numb the pain like Novocaine They fiend for money so I'm ejecting dope veins Who want the smoke? I got all the dosage Black and mild smoking 90's child opus Laughing at you trash ass promoters I'm out to get my loaf of bread Cause I came from crumbs Educate the youth to own a business Not own a gun The price of life is cheap Where I'm from I started from dirt Now I plant my seed and overcome Brothers losing lives quicker than Usain On the run Braveheart from the slums Eighth in my lungs Let my nuts hang Yeah I'm self made Drinking half an NJ While infinity mix and master this tape I just gave me more ammo From getting all this hate Activate my chi, triple up when I'm in the paint The bars that I write make them wanna go back